Foie. The epic discovery. Steal some shit from Polio. Are you eating here or are you gonna no, I gotta head out. venture? I got you, bro. Take it easy. Mad Polio, thievening. That's it. Time to watch some LUI. Mad. Can't wait to eat this. Wow. All right, guys, riding out from Starbucks, and as you can see, Planet Fitness is taking over this really good spot, which is unfortunate. I wish it was someone else, but I'm starving. I want to get home and get my post workout meal in, in before people watch this workout and tell me time under tension. And uh, I don't know, HIT is a waste of time and fear to powerlifting, but whatever. The reason I'm putting this before the, the workout footage is because I was editing footage here, or, or a video here, and I ran into a couple guys, I overheard them talking about the NPC, and I just was curious what they were talking about, and clearly they lifted and stuff, and it was an older gentleman and the kid my age, but uh, the older gentleman gave me this flyer, his name was Raul, or I guess his company card, and they make he makes custom board shorts, which is pretty sweet, because I was wondering, how bad it would be to like spend 70 bucks on board shorts and be wearing the same thing someone's wearing, especially if you're being compared to them. But anyways, uh, Marco, the younger guy who's actually an NPC competitor, who's competed like seven times, gave me this flyer for some B-Fit foods, which I actually used to use these guys, not this company, but a delivery service just like this when I lived in Tallahassee. And I guess Marco may be having a booth at this event coming up, April 18th, which looks like a pretty sweet show, and Victor Martinez is gonna be guest posing, but anyways, I was just really cool. It was interesting to meet like-minded people and just to get into like a sweet 20 minute, but 20 minute bodybuilding conversation. So it was fun, definitely a, a nice break from, I guess, never really discussing bodybuilding with the kids I hang out with, because no one I really know is into competing. I guess it's, even though it's really popular, it's not really commonplace. But anyways, um, Marco and I were talking and my YouTube channel came up. He was like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to, you know, edit some of the footage I get, but he doesn't really know how to do it. But he was like, I'm down to lift at Porky's and get some filming in uh, a session in one day. And I was like, dude, hit me up. So we exchanged contact info. So who knows, maybe I'll be getting some board shorts made and you guys can see uh, me train with this kid, Marco, who's actually, I think he's going for his pro card in a couple of months. So anyways, just wanted to bring it up. I'm starving, I'm rambling. I'm gonna go home and eat, crush this. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a protein pancake with carbs so I'm pumped but uh that birthday cake protein you're about to see stay tuned This is going to be a long voiceover for not very long of a workout, but it's just a lot of footage I want to show you guys. So today, I started with main focus on really controlled work today, and you can see my dumbbell incline press is looking much, much more balanced, which was a huge, huge uh, point I wanted to hit. On Wednesday of, well, I guess last Wednesday, I started with incline, and I went up to like 90s, and I was repping them out for like sets of 10 and 12, but... The quality was not there at all, and I'm much, much happier repping 75s for less reps, but controlling my uh, my shoulders and my chest, and I can feel um, a little bit different tightness in each pec, so definitely cleaning up my form. Dropped it to 65s and 55s for my last two sets, and as you can see, still in five times speed, the control is there and everything looks good. So. 
What I want to talk about today is something I don't really know anything about, so I guess uh, that's kind of troll, but it's HIT style training. Um, if you guys know like Mike Menser and some guys back in the 70s and 80s, they kind of pioneered the style of training. It's kind of like super slow style training, so basically a long negative, like four or five seconds, and a longer positive, so not really explosive. But the key is to use machines and cables and stuff where the tension doesn't change. So again, dumbbell press, or like a dumbbell fly wouldn't work because you're gonna close your uh, chest like this and there's gonna be really no resistance compared to here. So you're only training the strongest portion and not the top. So again, uh, I think like Nautilus machines and stuff like that are designed for it. But again, I just went and tried to do HIT style training today. So as you can see, after I hit the controlled incline press, um, and I did watch some YouTube videos and saw how guys were training with the style, I'm going to leave this in normal motion and let you guys watch the rest of this first uh, chest fly set. Now again, I am fully aware that powerlifting and doing heavy doubles and triples is great for building strength, if not the best, which is arguably the best way to build mass as well. But guys, you can't, I can't be doing that all the time, uh, being this low of body fat, this low of energy level, and having injuries, I can't just be hitting the bench three times a week for, you know, 80-90% of my max. It's just not something I enjoy doing, it's not something I want to do. So again, if I'm missing out on gains, so be it, I don't care. I really want to try different styles of training, because that's the whole fun part about bodybuilding, is that not one way works better than another, because you'll have guys with better genetics that train like shit, look better, and guys with inferior genetics may discover the best way to train and you know they'll never it's something you have to decide for yourself and experiment with yourself so set number two I increased by five pounds and as you can see when you're in a rep this long with lighter weight you have plenty of time to think about your contractions and again I hope I'm sore tomorrow I'll let you guys know on Friday when I hit arms but just looking at the quality of these movements and how it felt guys I'd say about half the sets I performed this HIT style the last 30% of the set, I was in more pain than I ever feel just doing like sets of 8 and 10. The pain is ridiculous. Obviously it's lactic acid buildup, but there's something to be said about being able to flex your chest and then have two or three more seconds against that pain to keep contracting. And you get a lot of time under tension, which is not necessarily uh, why I'm doing it. It's just you get to spend time contracting your muscle yourself you get to use your mind which is a super powerful tool in making gains guys it's more powerful than a lot of people think but just squeezing focusing and I mean there's really not much else to say I'm kind of just trying to give you guys my uh, you know how I view it my philosophy on it but there's guys that have pioneered this way of training and built epic physiques as you can see I'm enjoying the pump right there the craziest I've looked so I'm really happy with how the cuts going but Again, hitting more HIT, everything, uh, the rest of the workout's going to be that style. So again, it's going to be a little bit long, I'll try to keep the commentary lively, but uh, if you guys are listening, I'll just try to explain to you what I'm doing here with these lifts. And uh, just hit one set of shoulder press. This was my chest and arms day, I didn't want to do chest, shoulders, buys and tries and be in there for an hour and a half. I think it was like a 70 minute workout and it was brutal. So. Um, as I'm finishing up the shoulder press and get started on arms, guys, I want to talk about uh, something I thought of, or I looked up yesterday. I've obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but I've been getting some pretty bad insomnia. Like, I can't sleep. If I get in bed and I'm hungry at all, which is most nights, I literally wake up every 30 minutes waiting for my alarm clock to go off so I can eat a meal. It's just how I get when I'm this lean. But, um,. Yeah, I looked up something when I was at Starbucks the other night and the half-life of caffeine from what I gathered is about three to five hours. So if you guys are like me and you like to study and do work in the evening, if you're planning on going to bed at midnight and you're having a coffee at 6, 7 p.m. and you're like, oh, it's cool, you know, I'll be relaxed in four or five hours. Yeah, that might be true because you're used to taking pre-workouts. And as you guys can see, I'm going to leave this whole set in if you want to watch in real time how long the second set of tricep extensions looked. I mean, anyways, uh, three to five hours half-life of caffeine. So I was drinking a coffee like eight at night and I wanted to go to bed at midnight and I was like, shit, if the half-life of caffeine is five hours, that means that, you know, if my 200 milligrams serving is still gonna be half, that drug is still gonna be in my body at midnight or five hours after, it's like eight o'clock, I think. So at one in the morning and I was thinking, you know, no wonder I can't get to sleep. I'm already having insomnia and there's, you know, 50 to 100 milligrams in my system. Pretty much every night I go to bed. So a new thing I'm gonna try is um, 
no caffeine after 5 p.m., which sucks because I love having caffeine, but I'll just take, you know, a sizable dose between 3, 4, 5 p.m., and that's it, guys. So if you guys are having trouble sleeping or if you're stressed out and you have a lot on your mind, you know, I have trouble sleeping some nights with stuff that's completely unrelated to bodybuilding and school, you know, it's just life. Really try to not even taper down your caffeine, just limit it. No caffeine after 5 p.m. And uh, it's just something I thought of and I thought I would share with you guys because no one's ever mentioned to me the half-life of caffeine and clearly it's relevant because we drink so much of it. So again, guys, if you're nighttime or evening coffee enjoyers, go decaf, you know, even a small coffee is gonna leave that drug in your system and keep you stimulated. So I tried it yesterday for the first time, honestly, in months and I slept amazing, honestly. I fell asleep right away watching uh, like a chill YouTube video and. I felt amazing when I woke up. I woke up before my alarm, which is kind of normal, but I was ready to go, and I was in the gym by 8 a.m., 8.15, with a meal in me, so. Anyways, guys, I'll let you watch the rest of this. Uh, this is me hitting either my last or second to last set. Um, as you can see, the weights were really light. The rep control is there, the time under tension is there, and it's just HIT, the way I see it, it's weight that you're moving versus intensity of the contraction. You can move weight and you know get 10 reps, or you can spend a little bit more time with lighter weight and squeeze as hard as humanly possible. So just watch the end of the set, guys. It's something to try. I love all styles of training, and this was super fun. Uh, I'm gonna incorporate it into everything I do a little bit up until the show because training like this, I feel like, is very good when you're lean and when you're more prone to injury or if you just have injuries you're recovering. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for some more footage. Peace, and I love the support, guys. Thank you. The only type of dog that doesn't bark at me when I'm doing cardio, I've never seen this guy. It's like a little pit bull, little bully breed. All the little dogs bark for hours on end. Look at this guy. Hi. Hey. Hi. Wow. Good girl. Hi. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Later, Doge. Alrighty guys, training is down, cardio is down, and now it's time to try. Bam! Out with the old, in with the new birthday cake. Let's make a shake, guys. I'm not gonna put any carbs in it, actually. Nice hair. I'm gonna put uh, 25 grams of carbs from oatmeal in it, and then I'm gonna have one scoop of glycofuse, but I really wanna give it some volume with the oats, but two scoops of it, let's taste it, I'm excited. All right, official taste test, and I'm gonna enjoy this. Four. Excellent. Actually, it's definitely one of the best proteins I've had in a while. It tastes like vanilla ice cream with sprinkles and a little bit of vanilla cake. Damn. 10 out of 10 would buy again. Actually, probably will buy it again. A bigger tub. Try it, guys. Peace.